皆さんこんにちはひろきですご機嫌いかがでしょうか私は元気にしておりますさてさてテッド字幕付きで楽しもうのコーナーです今回のテーマは文化の遺産文化遺産をどうやって物語で紡いでいけばよいのかというテーマですこれはね文化というものはねもう国そのものであったりするような地域とか民族もいらっしゃるわけですから大事なことだと思いますはいぜひプレゼンテーションを見てみましょう I come from a culture of storytellers. Our oldest legends stretch back to a time of the supernatural. They're so ancient they begin long ago, before time began, when the world was both light and dark. So I thought we could discuss the story of story itself, of legacy. In a Western sense, legacy is the mark a person leaves on history. Statues are raised for the heroes, for those that are revered. In my culture, we see it a bit differently. Tidal Khanudik Pegaga. I'm Tidal. Its closest direct translation is coming in big. <laughs> I come from Haida Gwaii, an archipelago off the northwest coast of British Columbia, where on a clear day you could paint the shores of the Alaskan panhandle from our northern beaches. Our legacy, or the stories told about us, at least internationally, is of our monumental Haida art, our intricate 40 foot story poles, our longhouses and canoes, and our dance masks, which are all internationally renowned and collected. It is, however, our weaving that, in my opinion, is the unsung hero. I dare say our entire culture and society was supported by our weaving, be it the clothing we wore, or the rope for our fishermen. Or the baskets we wove to collect and store our food for winter. When you weave a cedar basket, you have your warps, which cascade down your form, and you have your weft, which spirals continuously around it, incorporating itself over and under your warps to create your basket. We are, I think, the weft, trying to find our way around the form, being careful not to miss a step or make a mistake, or for some of us, trying not to unravel altogether. <laughs> That's how I think of legacy as the weaving together of our stories passed on as a whole. And it may seem a little esoteric, but I'd love to give you an example. 250 years ago, approximately 20,000 Haidas thrived on the shores of Haida Gwaii. Less than 600 remained at the end of the 19th century. So it was 250 years ago that an explorer arrived sailing on the ship Santiago. The first European to do so. So, what was his legacy? Was it the inlet that's named after him on Haida Gwaii? Or what I assume were the unintended consequences of smallpox and tuberculosis, our potlatch bans, residential schools, the burning of our masks and poles as firewood? Or the collectors who came and ransacked the villages that we were forced to abandon? That is the colonial legacy. Our legacy is of those 600 Haidas who stood against the well oiled machinery of an empire that sought to destroy them. And though they have no inlets that bear their names, their legacy can be seen every time we stand up and say, We are the Haida nation. Their legacy was on display last fall when my clan, the Kayathlanis, the Sea Lion Town people, descended from those born at Kai Olnagai, Joth Olnagai, Haina, Kai Soon, and Nisi, held a potlatch. A potlatch is when clans and nations come together for the purposes of feasting and conducting business, like、uh, a chief being inaugurated, or a person receiving a name, or a death, or a marriage. We witness these business transactions to support or even to defend them if necessary. Our potlatch was a memorial pole raising honoring our late chief Gothlai. A memorial pole is, in and of itself, a symbol of wealth and status, much like a statue. Where they differ is in the rings that are carved up the pole, each one representing a potlatch, the real measure of wealth for a, a chief. Marking each occasion that a chief and his clan came together and they redistributed their wealth beyond their needs to ensure that other clans and nations could survive the winter as well. 
My piece of the story began on a beautiful fall afternoon, the type of day you would take a jacket with you and only ever end up carrying it around everywhere you go. I had no sooner landed in Haida Gwaii than I was in a speedboat skimming across the inlet to our traditional village site of Haina Ulnagai, or Sunshine Town. And as I leapt off the bow onto the shore, I was told that we would just miss the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or Mounties, who had come over on their speedboat to sleuth out the cause of the smoke that was billowing into the sky. They wanted to make sure that Maud Island wasn't on fire. You see, there was a, a bonfire going on the beach, and we were burning the branches from trees that we had been removing to unveil big rectangles of sunken earth where our longhouses once stood. And for me, the smoke was a bat signal in the sky. The Kayathlanis have returned home. Shortly after arriving, I was six feet deep in the earth and working to reach seven. I had arrived late to the digging party, but it was my honor to complete the final foot necessary so that the pole we would be raising in a few days' time was seated deep enough in the earth that the greatest winds of Haida Gwaii wouldn't topple it. What made the moment even more powerful were the treasures we found during the initial digging, a portion of a carved stone bowl, blue and red glass trade beads that came by way of Russian traders all the way from Bohemia. In a way, we were reawakening the spirits that were held in the land, where external forces once drove us to abandon those shores. Now we were coming home and they were there waiting for us. Hundreds of fellow community members Clans and, and relatives from our other nations came together to help us raise the pole. It began with an offering of food burned in the fire, a gift to our ancestors. The, canoe, the drum sounded announcing a canoe coming ashore, carrying the carvers of the pole, the current chief Gothlai and the daughter of our late chief, Fogana. The wild man of the woods was drummed through the village to clear out any unwelcome spirits. And the pole, which at the time lay on the forest floor, was cleansed with cedar boughs, dipped in ocean water and brushed along its length. And new offerings of glass beads were placed into the hole, so that centuries from now, long after this pole has decayed and, and returned to the earth, they would find those treasures from us when the next pole was raised in its place. Thick ropes that were tied around the midsection of the pole were stretched down the beach to the water's edge and all those who were able found a place along it. And from that first instruction to pull, it took only moments for the pole to rise up and become a permanent beacon for the next 200 years that this place is Haina Olnagai, and it remains the village of the Kaya Lanis Haidagai. Over this two-day event of feasting and raising the pole, I stood in the role of master of ceremony alongside my clan brother Gaguis. It's a role I inherited from and share with my maternal uncle, Kilst Lekhaji Sting. And during our potlatch, we shared in our songs and our stories, in our language and in our art, in our traditions, and in our deep relationship with our lands and waters. That is true legacy. That is the warps that make up my basket, and I am the weft that weaves myself through them to become a basket that everything else I learn and do in my life can be collected in to pass on. That day, I received this copper shield alongside of the name title. Perhaps you've had the same name since birth and will continue to have the same name until you die. Well, in my culture, we are often the caretakers of multiple names over our lifetime. Last year, I would have first introduced myself as Gidinquins. Now I am title. But I do continue to hold the name Gidinquins until such a time as my sister has a child and I can pass the name on to them. It is our duty to build on the wealth and status of our names, not just ourselves. This shield is a witness to the creation of that wealth and status. It is present at significant occasions. As I received my name, it was there at my wedding. And tonight it is here witnessing me speaking to all of you. Each of these occasions becomes tied to it, and one day when I pass on the name of title, I will recount all that the shield has witnessed and ensure that those stories are carried on with it. It's a concept I encourage each of you to borrow in your own unique way. The decisions we make today will make the difference on whether or not our descendants will have all the warps in place to weave their own basket to collect new knowledge and stories in. We must not allow our environment to continue to worsen to a point where none of us can carry on our cultures. 
We must be willing to do our business in the light. Make decisions in which we can proudly celebrate with our families and our communities or even our constituents. Mark individual achievement, but celebrate our collective well-being and build up our names so we are proud to pass them on. Personal legacy is inevitable, as unavoidable as the passage of time. And while you may want to prioritize your personal legacy to be the one with statues erected in your honor or an inlet that bears your name, I ask you to consider the collective legacy of those unnamed 600. They're the only reason that I'm standing here today. Will future generations look back at us in gratitude for all of the gifts we have left them? I would hate for them to look back at me and all they could say is, wow, he must have been pretty impressive. He even got a statue. Hawa, merci, thank you. Hi, I can't get started. Yeah, it's a lot of present. はい。自分たちを本当に誇りに思って、自信たっぷりに、しかも優しく、力強くお話しいただきました。いやー、私もね、家計がちゃんとしてるもんですから、はい。やっぱりそれをね、なんていうかこう、引き継いでいかなければいけないなという気持ちは、もう強く強く持っていますね。はい。そうですね。まあ、なかなか実現できていないというのが現状ではありますけれども、なんとかしたいと。まあ、別に、血のつながりではなくてもね、あの、ケース上のつながりとして、私は紡いでいきたいというふうに思っています。そこで伝えることは何なのか。それは、私が親から授かったものです。親から授かった教えです。それを子供に伝えたいと思っています。それが、まあ、私の家でのやり方です。はい。それぞれの家や民族のいや、村などのやり方があるのでしょう。はい。私は、私のやり方で、もし、子孫ができれば、教えを紡いでいきたいと。私が尊敬する母、はい。の教えを、今まで教えていただいたこと、今でも教えていただいていること、それを紡いでいきたいと思っています。今回も本当に勉強になりました。また次回も皆さんと一緒に勉強できることを楽しみにしています。それでは今回の配信は以上となります。また次の配信、または別の配信でお会いしましょう。さようなら。